Welcome everyone, I'm Pierluigi Salvarossi from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, and I will be presenting the second part of this tutorial, Signal Processing for IoT, Decision Fusion in Sensor Networks. Let me share the screen. So this uh, Topics that we will cover in this part are somehow related to practical problems that can be related to distributed detection and localization, in which we might consider that we have a sensor networks with several sensors distributed in a geographical area that are trying to sense some specific event of interest uh, that can be a binary event, for instance, uh, the presence of a leakage in an uh, oil platform or in a pipe or uh, presence of fire in uh, woods or some other similar examples. And of course, this information might be specially located and uh, possible to be sensed in a given area in which there will be some sensors that might be activated by the presence of this event that we are interested in detecting. Some other sensors might be not. And even the sensing process might not necessarily be perfect because there might be errors in the sensing process giving to uh, uh, creating false alarm or misdetection. And also the transmission of this information from the sensors to the fusion center might also be not perfect, not ideal, and might introduce errors. So the whole point is how do we combine the information that the sensors are transmitting to the fusion center in order to take a reliable decision on this event. This event, as we said, might be have specific location and then the range in which this event might be detected might be affected by the location. Uh, later, the overview, this topic is not uh, necessarily new. Somehow the, uh, a good way to start into this world is to start from the book, uh, by Professor Vashni that is covering uh, the work that has been doing in the 90s on the related topics. And a more recent uh, overview with state of the art is found in this book by, on, uh, published in 2019, edited by uh, Professor Jones and myself. And a uh, little bit of uh, papers, scientific papers that uh, may be related to what we will discuss today. So most of the topics are somehow taken by these uh, papers that I've shown, I'm showing here in these two slides. And first of all, one relevant thing to say is that we will be using uh, multiple input, multiple output methodologies in this wireless sensor network context for distributed detection. And those of you that are familiar uh, with communication theory might be familiar as well with the uh, multiple input, multiple output methodologies. The main reason for introducing this into wireless sensor networks is basically that uh, uh, MIMO systems, they introduce spatial diversity. This is a very nice way to uh, have fading mitigation, meaning fading with the uh, problems that the propagation channel is introducing into the transmission and reception of signals. It is spectral efficient in the in sense that it's possible to exploit this uh, multiple antennas and uh, in a way to reduce the energy uh, requirements of the systems. And it comes almost for free, meaning that uh, in wireless medium, I mean, of course, uh, the interference is existing just because all the receiving nodes will be listening to all the transmitting nodes. So there is no dedicated channels. And uh, so there is interference, but if we with some additional processing are able to exploit this, this interference, this can become a benefit into our systems. So the basic scenario that we will focus on in order to build those systems that we can mention, for instance, for distributed detection and localization is this, uh, uh, scenario shown in this slide, in which we have assumed that we have a binary phenomenon of interest that will be sensed by a set of K sensors. These sensors, as we said, are not perfect, meaning the sensing process might introduce errors. And also these sensors will be transmitting their information, so their 
sensed information in relation to the phenomenon of interest to a fusion center that will collect the information from all these sensors transmitted on a wireless channel with interference, of course. And then the fusion center will try to combine this information in an optimum way in order to provide a reliable information of this on the binary state of the phenomenon of interest. So there are two possible source of errors in this uh, system. One is coming from the sensing process on the sensing channels between the phenomenon of interest and the sensors. And another source of errors is on the reporting channels, meaning on the part that this where the sensors are transmitting the information to the fusion center. Little bit more formalism uh, is related to the system model is that so we will consider that the phenomenon of interest is a binary uh, phenomenon. So we have two hypotheses, H0, H1. We have K binary sensors that will be able to sense this uh, binary state of the source uh, through noisy sensing channels that are basically characterized by the local performance of the single sensor. So each sensor will be basically described with a given probability of false alarm and probability of correct detection that are denoted with PFK, PDK. Each sensor is assumed to have one single transmit antennas and might have conditional independent or conditional dependent decision given the state of the source of the phenomenon of interest. Also, we will assume that at the fusion center, we will have N receiving antennas so the set of K transmitting sensors and N receive antennas will create basically a MIMO uh, communication channel. And we assume that on these reporting channels, there will be quasi-static uh, flat fading and with the channel state information at the receiver in which we will focus in this part on both instantaneous and statistical channel state information. Also, Perfect synchronization is will be assumed in uh, all the talks, so there will be basically no detail provided on how uh, synchronization in the system is uh, implemented. Why will be uh, the complex value signal at the receive antennas, and uh, H will be the channel coefficient on the reporting channel, and uh, the transmitted information by the sensors, so the binary information that is related to the binary state that has been sensed by the sensors will be either the BPSK symbol or an on-off keying symbol. So we will assume that the transmission of the sensors will be using minus one plus one or zero plus one. And also we will assume that at each receive antenna there will be standard additive white Gaussian noise. The discrete time model for on the reporting channel, so then will be this uh, equation one. And also we will be defining uh, total and individual per sensor transmit SNR and total and individual per sensor receive SNR in uh, equation two and three. Also about the sensors, we will assume that sensors will be a realistic sensor, meaning with the local performance such that uh, local false alarm probabilities will always be smaller than uh, local correct detection probabilities. Otherwise, just tossing a coin will be better than using the sensor. Also, we will call good sensors those in which the local fast alarm probability will be smaller than 0.5 and the correct detection probability will be larger than 0.5. And also, we will call homogeneous scenarios those in which all the sensors will have identical uh, local performance. The fusion center basically will be uh, operating on a threshold based test in which a specific statistic that depends uh, on the received signal Y. So it will be a, a special processing of this information Y, and we will present different way of processing. So this statistic, uh, meaning uh, the received signal will be processed to compute this statistic lambda that will then be compute, compared with a threshold. Uh, here denoted gamma, and the threshold is usually defined, for instance, according to bias or name on person criteria. So for instance, uh, giving uh, a fixed uh, global uh, false alarm probability or similar constraint. So the system performance will be evaluated uh, considering this global probability of false alarm and detection, meaning the false alarm and detection performance at the fusion center, or we might consider error probability or even precision and recall. This becomes uh, mostly useful when we have uh, unbalanced uh, probabilities in the binary states uh, 
of the source of the phenomenon of interest. Benchmark for performance are typically considered uh, these two. Uh, one is the observation bound, that is when we assume that the sensing process is noisy, but the reporting channels are perfect, meaning there will be no error in the transmission between the sensors and the fusion center. On the other side, another a dual bound is what is called the communication bound, in which we assume that the sensing part is perfect. There will be no error introduced by sensing uh, the binary uh, state, while the communication part on the reporting channels is noisy and is real. So in the first case, we will have closed form expression uh, given by this uh, binomial uh, expression in equation 10 and 11, while in the second case for the communication bound, we don't have closed general form because this will depend on which specific modulation format is used on the reporting channel. So we start with channel aware MIMO decision fusion. That is meaning basically the case in which we assume that there is instantaneous channel state information at the receiver, meaning the decision fusion, the fusion center knows exactly the specific realization of the reporting channel for that transmission. In this case, we have basically two uh, approach uh, to decision fusion design. One is called the code and fuse approach in which the received information Y is processed directly to obtain an estimate of the uh, state of the source H. In this kind of approach, we will print log likelihood ratio. One is maximum ratio combining, one is equal gain in combining, and the final one is max log. So the optimum rules is based, this, uh, based on the log likelihood ratio, as we know from Bayesian framework for optimum decision detection. And this is given by this expression 12, which uh, exploiting the fact that the phenomenon of interest the layer of uh, sensors and the fusion centers, they basically are a Markov chain. So exploiting this Markov chain structure, meaning that the information at the fusion center is conditionally independent from the source state given the, infra the sensing information at the sensor, then we can translate equation 12 into 13, which can be further translated into equation 14 if we assume that sensors have conditional independent local decision. This equation, however, even if it provides the optimal way of processing the information, has three main problems. One is the high computational complexity that is exponential with the number of sensors, k. It has numerical instability because involved exponential functions that have very large uh, dynamic range and with fixed point implementation might create problems. And also it has excessive knowledge requirements. If you go back to the slides, you can notice that in order to solve that, uh, to compute that uh, quantity, we need to know local performance of all the sensors. We need to know the channel uh, state information, meaning the matrix H, and we need to know the noise balance. Or if you want, we need to know the SNR on the reporting channel. An alternative rule is what is called maximum ratio combining, coming from replacing in the previous equation of the optimum rule, uh, assuming that there will be perfect local sensing. This is just a uh, fictitious hypothesis, just for design purpose. But if the only two um, value that the vector of uh, sensed information at the sensor uh, location can be either all the sensors will be trust will be sensing state H0 or all the sensor will be trust uh, sensing the state H1. In this case, that, equi in, uh, that equation collapses into equation 15, which is much simpler to implement. It uh, does not require full knowledge of H, but only requires knowledge of the sum of the rows of H and also uh, has a much uh, a lower computational complexity that is basically linear with the number of received antennas. The nice result is also that even if this is not optimum anymore, but at low SNR, in the case of homogeneous scenario, it can be proved that this route performs basically as the optimum performance. An alternative rule is 
if we get a further simplification of the previous rule by ignoring the amplitudes of the channel coefficients, in this case we get equation 16, which has no specific results in terms of optimality, has similar knowledge requirements, in, but slightly simpler because we don't even require the amplitudes now of the channel, but only to know their phases, and the computational complexity is basically the same. Finally, this max log rule is built on using the max log approximation uh, that is quite popular in communication theory. So to simplify the optimum log likelihood rule, and then we can come up with this equation 17, which has similar knowledge requirements to the optimum rule, but it can have a slightly less computational complexity, still exponential with the number of sensors, but with some uh, complexity reduction that uh, depends on which uh, scheme for decoding we are using. For instance, field decoding is a very popular technique to have uh, reduced complexity in this uh, implementation of this kind of uh, equations. The result for max log is that in the case that the SNR is low and we have good sensors, as we defined before, then the max log approach uh, maximum ratio combining performance, meaning that in the case of homogeneous scenario, these performance are the same as the optimum rule. While if the SNR is high, then independently of what kind of sensor we are using, if good or not, or homogeneous or not, the max log performance is always approaching optimum performance. The second uh, family of uh, approaches is what we have called the code then fuse approach, in which the decision is made into two steps. The first one in which we try from the received signal at the fusion center to reconstruct the transmitted information at the sensors, and then based on the transmitted information from the sensor, meaning the information that they have been sensing on the state information, we design some combining uh, information similar to a sort of voting rule. If we know each sensor's what has been its decision for the state, then we can implement a sort of voting scheme that will provide the final uh, estimate, uh, the, the final estimate for the state of the source. So, <clears throat> in this case, uh, the decision is both, uh, the decision based on the. Um, on the information from the sensors is typically based on what is called the chair Varshney rule, that is the optimum way of implementing this voting scheme, while the way in which the information X is reconstruct based on the information uh, on the received vector Y, this typically can be done according to a classical communication uh, decoding scheme, could be done, for instance, using maximum likelihood detection, or could be done based on MMC detection. At least these are the two rules that we will be presenting. So the optimum chair version rule is basically an optimum way of combining the information of binary information at each sensor. It's basically an optimum voting scheme in which the voting of each sensor is weighted with respect to the local sensing performance. This is quite intuitive because we somehow expect that if sensors have different local performance, some will be more reliable, some will be less reliable. So it's quite intuitive that we should give more credits to the decision of the sensors that are more reliable than to the decision of the sensors that are less rel reliable. So this optimum way of weighting uh, the sensors' votes is leading to what is called chair Varshney rule. And the nice result is that in the homogeneous scenario case, in which all the sensors have similar performance, then this optimum chair Vashni rules collapse into a very simple scheme, is basically a counting rule, for instance, a majority voting. So the knowledge requirements for the uh, chair Vashni rule are the local performance, because they are the basis for building the proper weights of each both of each sensors, but in the case of homogeneous scenarios, then we have no requirements in terms of uh, knowledge of the sensors. And the computational complexity is basically linear with the number of sensors, meaning that it will be negligible with respect to the complexity of the previous uh, stage in which we are reconstructing the information X. For reconstructing the information X, we might consider uh, that uh, we use ML uh, decoding, 
given by equation 19 in the figure. And the nice thing is that in the case of high SNR, the combination of uh, chair vashni rule and maximum likelihood decoding again approach optimum performance. In this case, the knowledge requirement are basically given by the matrix channel state information H and the computational complexity is again exponential with the uh, number of sensors, but might be reduced, for instance, using sphere decoding techniques or other similar techniques. An alternative is to use a minimum mean square error detection, which is uh, for this specific problem expressed in by equation 20. In this case, we have no specific results in terms of optimality of performance, but the knowledge requirements are still excessive, let's say, height in terms of knowledge requirements, but the computational complexity is significantly reduced because it becomes polynomial in both number of sensors and number of receive antennas. So not anymore an ex exponential computation uh, complexity. So the summary of the different rules that we have been presenting in both the code and fuse approach and the code then fuse approaches are shown in these uh, slides, in which we can see the different way of processing the collected information Y to build this statistics lambda. And then the comparison in terms of requirements, complexity, and performance are summarized into this table. Some examples, we will make reference to this homogeneous scenario with uh, equally probable hypotheses and with some constraint on the maximum global probability of false alarm. And we will consider different combination of number of sensors and receive antennas and uh, receive SNR on the reporting channels. So in this uh, case, we will show performance in terms of receiver operating characteristics in which we can see 10 dB and 15 dB uh, cases on the left and on the right side. And we are comparing performance of all these different approaches with respect also to the observation bound that you can see is quite uh, better than the optimum rule. And then you can see, for instance, that the max log is basically very close to the optimum uh, rule and the other uh, rules might have uh, might be more appealing depending on if we are at low or higher false alarm probability and yeah they have different behavior in different kind of scenarios. Also another interesting uh, analysis could be done in understanding how different rules behaves with respect to the SNR and then again we can see for instance now on the right side we can see how uh, the combination of chair vashmi and maximum likelihood com com uh, decoding uh, approach the optimum rule for high snr we can see for instance the effect of having uh, different numbers of receive antennas in this case it's shown moving from one to two antennas how each uh, rule basically improve performance we could also see so the impact of having different receive antennas on, uh, for instance, on the probability of correct detection or probability of error. Uh, we could study the impact of uh, implementing different number of sensors. For instance, the nice things from the figure on the right is that, again, the rule combining chair vashni rule and maximum likelihood decoding has a minimum uh, in the number of sensors and then starts increasing again, meaning that there will be an optimum size of the network to be considered in case we go for that specific rule. So first from our summary, we have been presenting different uh, fusion rules that have different uh, performance in terms of uh, uh, prob in terms of probability of detection fast alarm, in terms of knowledge requirements, in terms of computational complexity. And we have seen how they behave depending on different parameters of the systems. And for instance, this can be useful for uh, understanding saturation effect with respect to the number of receive antennas to employ or to the optimum number of sensors to be deployed. Then the second part of this uh, uh, presentation will be related to what is called channel unaware MIMO decision fusion. So in the case in which we assume that we don't have instantaneous knowledge of the specific realization of the channel coefficients on the reporting channels, but we only have statistical information. So we know the distribution of the uh, coefficients. In this case, we assume that distribution might be 
according to Rayleigh fading. This is very common in the case that uh, we have non line of sight uh, uh, scenario between uh, the transmitter and the receiver, meaning in this case the sensors and the fusion center. Rise fading is typically used when we have line of sight, meaning uh, that will be a dominant path in the propagation environment. So these two models are typically uh, based on uh, modeling the coefficient as complex uh, Gaussian uh, random variables, zero mean in the case of Rayleigh fading and non-zero mean in the case of rise fading. Then in order to generalize these two well uh, popular uh, models that have nice things to be very easy to be uh, built from a mathematical perspective because of the Gaussian assumption, in order to keep the nice mathematical tractability but still be arbitrary enough to uh, model different practical environments, we generalize these two distribution to what we have called arbitrary non-line of sight fading and arbitrary line of sight fading in which we assume that the channel statistics are channel coefficients are distributed according to gaussian mixture in the first case gaussian mixture of zero mean components and in the second case gaussian mixture where at least one com component has a non-zero mean this allows us to make a lot of different uh, practical uh, statistics that can fit different and channel environments and then as i was saying keeping mat mathematical uh, tractability so log likelihood ratio again will be the optimum test but however again in this case the performance then is not possible to obtain in close form uh, one thing to mention that in this case in which we are not having channel state instantaneous channel state information but only statistical information on the channel distribution we assume that the transmission by the sensors is based on on off key meaning that the sensors will be active in one state of the source or silent in another state for instance if there is no leakage, sensors will be silent. If they detect a leakage, they will be transmitting a specific pulse. In this case, it's quite crucial to compute what is called the number of active sensors that here is referred to as the variable L. And in this case, again, we can notice and we can exploit that the chain state of the source number of active sensors and information collected at the fusion centers they represent a markov chain and this again can be exploited to manipulate the optimum log likelihood ratio test but as i was saying even in this case the final performance of this test will not be available in closed form however we can characterize both the number of active sensors given a specific uh, hypothesis of the state of the source in both the homogeneous scenario and the non-homogeneous scenarios. And also we can characterize, given the number of active sensors, we can characterize uh, how are the statistics of the received signal at the fusion center that are followed this expression in all the four cases that we've been considering, Rayleigh fading, Rice fading, arbitrary non-line of sight fading, and arbitrary line of sight fading. In this case, it's quite common to use the energy test. Energy test is very appealing because of these uh, properties. First of all, it's very simple to implement. You basically it just requires that you collect the received signals and then compute the energy of this received signal. So it has negligible computational complexity, does not require any system knowledge. You don't need to know local performance. You don't need to know channel state information. You don't need to know SNR, nothing. You just collect the signal, compute the energy. And the nice thing is that in many scenarios of practical interest, this simple test behaves almost as the optimum test. So the result that can be proved is that in Rayleigh fading, the energy test is statistically equivalent to the optimum test. So it has the same performance. In arbitrary non-line of sight fading, if there is this condition verified, then the energy test is again statistically equivalent to the optimum test. This again can be proved. And the nice thing, this cannot be proved, but what has been 
possible to see with all these uh, results that uh, we can exploit based on this analysis that we are showing later on is that in most cases of uh, arbitrary non line of sight of failure, so in most practical channels, energy test and optimum test have a very negligible gap. So energy test is basically near optimum. So the performance of energy tests are nicely likely possible to be computed in a closed form. And these are the closed form expression for the uh, probability of correct detection and false alarm on all these four uh, channels, type of channels, really rice, arbitrary non line of sight and arbitrary line of sight. And again, we can then use this uh, closed form expression to understand how different channels, different systems behave on different channels. So we can understand the impact of different configuration of the system, but also on different channels, different environments on the system performance. So we can again present this performance in terms of receiver operator characteristics and see how different environments impact the performance. And we can also, for instance, derive what is called asymptotic analysis, meaning in this case, what is the impact of having a large amount of sensors employed in the system? And this, in this case, has been done considering uh, two cases, individual power constraining, meaning that we increase the number of sensors and we have a limitation only on the energy available at each sensors, or total power constraint, meaning that we increase the number of sensors, but we have a, a limitation on the overall system energy, meaning that when we increase the number of sensors, each sensor will be reduced in the energy amount that is available. And basically, on using the multivariate central limit theorem, it's possible to derive in close form the characteristic function for the decision statistics that allows for low complexity numerical evaluation of the performance. And then again, we can understand in large system what will be the impact of different environments modeled through this uh, arbitrary non-line of sight and arbitrary line of sight, uh, how these different env environments might impact the system performance. So summary, we have been presenting energy tests. That is basically a very interesting solution in the case we don't have instantaneous channel information, but only statistical channel information, and how this can be used for assessing impact of the different environments on the system performance. Thank you. If you have any questions, I guess we can discuss through the chat. Yes. We can stop. Let me stop the presentation.